Hey guys, Alex here from Permitted, and today I'm going to show you how to get a sales tax permit in the state of California. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that you actually need a sales tax permit in California. So if your business is based in California, or if you're not based in California, but you either have people, property, or inventory in California, that could be contractors, full-time employees, uh, renting, buying, leasing a warehouse, sending delivery vehicles there, or just storing inventory. Um, even if you're just an Amazon seller and your inventory is sitting there, you could have Nexus in California and there, therefore have a sales tax obligation there. California also has affiliate and click-through Nexus. So if you have online affiliates or in-person affiliates, uh, you could also have Nexus there. If you're unclear on if you have Nexus in California, contact us. I'll put a link in the description and we'll help you out for free. Um, but with all that being said, let's actually get you a sales tax permit, assuming that you do have Nexus in California. The first thing we're going to do is go to the California's Department of Taxation website and scroll down. And we're going to click register a new business activity. On this page, it's going to ask us what we're doing. We're just going to say we're selling items or goods in California. Check out these other boxes, see if they apply to you. But if they do, they might have you filling out a substantially longer form. The next page is asking if we're selling any regulated goods like alcohol, cigarettes, tobacco, tires, electronic devices. Not relevant to me, but check out the electronic devices one in particular if you do sell electronics online. Next page is asking me about if I'm importing, manufacturing fuel or uh, lumber or wood products, um, prepaid wireless devices, no, lead acid batteries, no. And then it's going to ask me what kind of business am I registering? I'm going to select LLC for our purposes here. Just keep in mind that if you're registering a corporation, it might ask for some additional information. All right, next page is going to ask us what jurisdiction we are from. So if you're a US-based company, you can just leave it as USA. If you're from outside of the United States, uh, keep in mind that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get a sales tax permit and to actually do your filings because you're going to need a US bank account. Um, I believe California also requires an, a, a social security number or an ITIN number. Um, we, our company can't help you get a sales tax permit if you're an international seller, but if you contact us, we'll put you in touch with one of our partners who can. Um, but assuming that you are based from the U S the next thing you need to do is enter in your FEIN. You can skip SEIN and then indicate what state your business is located in. If you're not based primarily out of California. So if you're in California, you're going to have to put your uh, California Secretary of State Entity ID number, but if you're not based in California, but you have Nexus in California, you would select which state uh, your business is from. So for my purposes, I'm just going to put Colorado. Now, since I'm from out of state, I don't have to have a California Secretary of State Entity ID number, but what I do need to do is in input my non-California issue, um, issued NAD ID number. So in my case, this is going to be my LLC registration number from the state of Colorado. This would have been sent to you either digitally or in mail when you registered your business with your home state. Uh, so I'm gonna speed this up for you. I'm just gonna input some dummy information here so we can go on to the next page. All right, got that filled out. I'm going to hit next. Oh, forgot that. Am I changing from one entity type of business entity to another? I'm going to say no. So that was like if you purchase the business, you're changing from an LLC to a corporation. Or if you um, were an LLC and changed to a corporation and you weren't purchased, you're just changing um, your entity type, you would select yes because their California would require you to you to get a new sales tax permit. Um, assuming this is your first time registering, that's probably not going to be applicable to you. So we're gonna click no. Do I currently have an account with the California Division of Taxation? I'm going to hit no. Um, if you do, then you should hit yes just so that you can link it all together and you only have one login. 
Uh, and so it's saying, based on all of my answers, I need to register for a seller's permit, for a sales tax permit. Well, I knew that. Uh, you just have to answer all of their questions to get this far. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to say, um, are you interested in getting a temporary permit? Would you like to apply for a temporary seller's permit? This is, it's completely up to you. So if you're already doing business in the state of California, or if you're planning on doing business in California in the next 90 days, I would select yes for this because they'll give you a temporary sales tax ID that you can use to collect and remit sales tax now. And you won't have to wait for California to process your sales tax permit application. And it can take a little while. I would always give yourself at least six weeks to get a sales tax permit processed by any state. Um, totally up to you if, if you need to do this, or if you want to do this. For my purposes, I'm going to select no. All right, so it's going to ask me what is my business address. I'm going to type that in now. Next, it's going to ask me about the LLC and just some general information here. Uh, so it's going to ask what the legal name of the business is. And for for this, I'm just going to put permitted LLC. Make sure it's the legal name. So that would include LLC or Inc. Um, or, you know, limited, uh, whatever was actually originally registered, not your DBA. And then the start date of the business. So I'm just going to put this date here. You, you'll find this uh, date on the paperwork that was given to you when you registered your business in the state of um, in your home state. So in my case, it would be the state of Colorado. Um, all right, it's got my dummy information here, contact information. I'm just going to put my cell phone, put my email address, and put this. It's going to ask me what my relationship is to the business. So I'm just going to put a manager and then what is the manager's, um, or sorry, I'm going to say I'm just a member and I'm going to say that I'm an individual. So assuming that your business is owned by yourself, you're just going to put individual. If there's multiple members or managers, they'll ask you to do that, to input those later. All right. So I'm just going to put my name here. Gonna ask for some private information. You don't need to input your FEIN um, or your SEIN if this is an individual. If you were inputting the information for another member or manager, then uh, you would need to do that. It's gonna need your driver's license information as well. So I'm gonna do that. I didn't like my fake. Uh, I didn't like my fake SSN there. There we go. It would take that one. Um, and then it wants your, your state ID number. So for me, let's see how many digits is this? Put some dummy information in there. going to want the contact information for the individual. So if you're a single member LLC or a um, sole proprietor, then you're going to be entering in the same information over and over. Um, this part is just going to ask for the contact information for the member or manager. So I'm just going to put the same thing as I did before. It's going to ask for the home address for all of the members and managers as well. Next, going to ask if I want to add additional members or managers. So if you do have um, multiple owners of your business, you would select yes, and you'd go through the same process I just did um, where you would add everyone. Uh, since I'm a single member LLC, I'm just going to hit no. 
And it's also going to require that you submit a copy of one of your IDs. Um, so you just need to scan a picture of your driver's license and then attach it. I'm going to do that here real quick. I'll just add a random photo because they don't care. Well, they don't care because I'm doing, I'm not actually going to submit this. I'm just showing you how, how it would be done. All right, it's going to ask for the contact information for books and records. So um, this would be your accountant or whoever has information to your financial documents. I'm just going to put myself. It's also going to ask about business activities. So who should they contact um, regarding what the business is doing, what they're selling, where they're selling it, um, things of that nature. This is who they'll contact if they ever have questions um, regarding your liabilities. Uh, so if you're ever audited, this is who they're going to most likely reach out to. It's going to ask, uh, is the business accepting credit card payments and are you making internet sales? So if I hit, if I hit yes, it's going to ask what the merchant card processor name is and the processor account. You'd have to get that information. So if you're using, um, say, Stripe or something, I would just put your login here as well as, um, you know, the name of, of, of what processor you're using. I'm going to hit no. And are you making internet sales? So it's going to ask, are you making sales through a third party? Yes or no. Um, if you hit yes, then it's going to ask you what websites you are selling through. So, for example, if you're selling on Amazon, you're selling on Etsy, you would put that information here as well. It's also going to want to know what the uh, website address is for your, your own website. So I'm going to select no um, just to speed up this process. Uh, it's going to ask you what your NICS code is. The NAC, NAICS code is just a classification of what your what industry you're in. I would recommend just Googling it, just saying NICS code search. And there's a lot of um, e a lot easier ways to find the code than in there. So you can uh, just do a search for the keyword of your business. So I'm just going to say, for example, um, toys. And you can refine it. All right. Dolls, toys, game manufacturing, that would be your code. Boom, easy, insert it, done. You can also search it here. So I'm just going to add a, a dummy one. Hit OK. You can add multiple codes. There's really no reason to. They don't require you to add multiple. It's just so that they have an idea of what kind of businesses are operating in the state. Do you have a retail location, stock of goods, or warehouse in California? Um, not applicable to me, but answer it based on the question you get. Are you installing or leasing equipment in California? Um, if you are, hit yes. Just know that that's going to create a nexus in California. That's kind of what they're getting at here. All right, so next step is asking me additional questions. So it's asking me what the start date is for um, my sales into the state, just be mindful of the date that you choose, because if you put a date that's in the past, then um, there's a chance you're going to be audited and they're going to say, we want to collect that tax from you. Where is it? And if you put it too soon in the future and you aren't also getting a temporary permit, you could get yourself in hot water as well. So I would recommend selecting a start date six weeks from now. Um, if you do owe tax in California already and you started selling into the state a long time ago and you had Nexus beginning a long time ago, I would recommend um, voluntarily disclosing unpaid tax to the state. We can help you do that. Uh, just contact, contact us. Uh, so for here, I'm just going to select six weeks from now. I'm going to say my projected sales is $100. Do you anticipate $0 in monthly sales? Um, I'm going to say no. 
notepad. So it's just going to ask me um, what my monthly sales are. So let's say $10,000 and what, um, how much of those sales are going to be taxable. So for example, I might be making sales to a wholesaler. Um, those sales would be exempt because uh, they're going to be reselling them or I'm reselling them to them. Um, the sales that would be taxable are the sales that I'm selling directly to end consumers. And that's all it's asking for here. Uh, just keep in mind as well, though, if you have a substantial amount of non-taxable sales, then the state might be coming to you asking for your exemption certificates um, to prove that you didn't have to collect sales tax on your non-taxable sales. Um, that's the only thing you should really keep in mind here. It's going to ask what kind of products you're selling. And do you have any independent sales reps in California? So that's going to create an excess as well. That's what they're getting at. It's going to ask for uh, where the books and records are. So this is wherever you're storing your accounting information. Select the mailing address. So this is where the state is going to send official communications to. So make sure that this is an address that you're going to monitor regularly. Um, most states don't allow you to use a PO box, so this has to be somewhere legitimate. Oh, unique about California is that they require information regarding who your suppliers are. This is uh, kind of strange. I don't know a ton of other states that require this information. But I'm just going to make one up here. All right, next is just going to provide a summary of the registration information. So um, making sure I understand what that start date is. That's super important because that's when California is going to expect that you begin collecting and remitting sales tax. If you put that in the past, then you're going to uh, probably get audited. Just keep that in mind. And what your reporting basis is, California is going to assign you a reporting basis based on your estimated sales. Um, you can't really select that. Uh, it's going to say yes. I acknowledge everything. And then it's going to ask who prepared this information. I'm just going to put myself. Just asking for you to confirm everything that you just put because it's legally binding. You want to register to vote? No. And then the very last step, just confirming everything. All you have to do is hit submit. Um, if you apply for a temporary permit, it should be generated for you automatically. Otherwise, it will be mailed to you in, I would say, up to six weeks, California can be kind of slow, but that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about how to get a sales tax permit in California, you can leave us a question below on the video or send us a note. Um, we can also help you get sales tax permits everywhere in the United States. Uh, check us out. Our website is salespermitted.com. All right, take care. Bye.